Hey guys, Jamie, Animal Care Supervisor here with Zookeeper Ty. We just thought we'd give you guys kind of a bird's eye view, if you will, of the penguin feeding today. We know you guys probably miss the penguins and the penguins probably miss you too. It's also starting to be breeding season for the Magellanic penguins that we have here at the zoo. So you can see burrows are starting to get a lot more used. You can notice we've given them rocks as well as grasses. Those are things that they would naturally be using to build up those nests. And you can see they pair up. They usually have one single monogamous pair for the season at least. So they'll stay kind of tightly knit together. They will take turns and come eat. If they do lay an egg, then they really start to hopefully take turns every once in a while. There is a more selfish parent that wants to be away from the nest more often. But most of our pairs are pretty good at sharing the burden. And there's Herbie. I'm sure a lot of you know Herbie. He's one of our old guys and has lost some color every time he molts, so that's why he's almost white now. We laugh because when Herbie takes a nap, his almost all white back shows. And we get a lot of you thinking that it's a penguin flipped over onto its back so that you see its belly. And we always check, but it's always just Herb's taking a nap. This is our other kelp gull, Sonny. He's a handsome boy. So our feeding of these guys here at the zoo is kind of a mix of both hand feeding and feeding in the water. There's some benefits to each. Hand feeding gives us a chance to have these guys come out so we can get a much closer view of what's going on with them. You see they have those name bands that you guys probably often notice. And that helps us as well to make sure that we know who's getting food, who's getting vitamins, things like that. Although we do start to get to know their personalities and can tell them apart fairly decently, especially keepers that have been here a long time. So hand feeding allows us those things. It allows us to build a relationship with the birds. We gotta give Chai credit. She's trying to feed essentially the vegetable fish right now that nobody wants. We do have some spoiled birds here too. And then that water feeding I talked about, sometimes we will broadcast feed in the water. And that's also a good, a good way to feed too. Um, like I said, we tried to do the mix because in the wild they'd be catching their fish in the water. And so having it at least in the pool does encourage them to kind of naturally forage and grab fish like they would every day out in the ocean. So we feed four kinds of fish here at the zoo. That way it gives them a variety of tastes. Um, it also gives them a variety of different nutritional factors that each type of fish has. And just keeps it interesting. They definitely will pick their favorite kind of fish. It's not necessarily a favorite across the whole flock. It depends on the bird. So we start to learn things like that as well. That way if we do have to try to get a vitamin or if there's any kind of medical treatment that can be put in the fish, we know the secret treat weapon to try to deliver that to each penguin. So we feed smelt, capelin, herring, and trout. And even different rounds of, of babies that we've had here hatched at the zoo will kind of shift what the favorite fish is. I'd say right now, Ty, would you agree that it's probably herring and trout right now? Every once in a while we get some good babies that are really good capelin eaters, which is nice. Like I said, we try to kind of feed the vegetables, if you will, first, the fish that not everybody prefers, and then save the treats for the end. There's Cuberta, she's one of our great moms. She's checking us out. Hi, Cubie. So the penguins have those name bands which is a nice way to tell when they're on land, and it's an, it's an awesome way if you guys can see them at the window, but then you'll see Cuberta also has just a zip tie band with numbers, 
or some of them are just a color band. And that helps us a lot if they're far away and we can't read those letters or if they're in the water or even underwater and we just get a glimpse. We at least get a color of a bird and we can start to narrow down any behavioral observations that we want to know just by that color. You can hear as we're talking, the penguins are also talking to each other. So they get especially noisy during breeding season. They definitely want to let other birds know that this is their burrow, this is their spot. Don't come mess with me. It also probably helps make the males more appealing for some of our ladies. We are more heavily boy skewed in our population right now, so the boys have to work for it a little bit. And once they pick their burrow, they'll defend that spot. They'll be there frequently building that nest up. <laughs> Yeah, so as Ty was just mentioning, penguins eat their fish head first. That way fins don't end up spiked up backwards. That would not feel, you know, it's already incredible enough that they eat fish whole and eat fish that big, but it would definitely not be comfortable going down their throats if it was going down backwards. So head first is the way to go. Most of our penguins are really good at catching fish um, horizontally and then flipping it the way they want to eat it. Some, we have to be a little more helpful and make sure they get head first. There are some special birds. Ty, do you have a favorite penguin? I don't know. Justin's kind of going on me. <laughs> he just likes to stare at walls. I know. He, he is an awkward but very lovable bird. He's been here a long time. He's a goodie but an oldie. Like I said, each penguin has their own personality, so once you get to know them, there are some that are stinkers, some that are much more calm than others. They're all very different from each other. <laughs> we usually have one or two penguins that have figured out, especially when we get to kind of the the treat fish, if you will. They go on the other side of the feeding rock because everybody, once we start that, wants to go see Ty by her feet. But some of these penguins have figured out if they go on the other side of the feeding rock, the keeper will toss some fish that way and they don't really have to compete with the group. No, so we're at our AM feeding. The penguins are definitely more picky at the AM feeding. Their appetite is a lot lower. They definitely tend to, to really kick in gear for that PM feeding, which is why we recommend for any um, behind the scenes feedings that we get to do with a guest. We really try to have them come in the afternoon because everybody is just a lot more hungry and ready to go. These guys aren't always early risers. It takes a while to, to really get into the day, I think. Yeah, so we'll see, now ties into some of the trout and she's starting to get a group of very greedy trout birds. <laughs> we try to teach them manners as best we can. Penguins are part of a species survival program. It's an SSP if you ever catch that wording at the zoo. And so zoos, AZA zoos work cooperatively to make sure that we're breeding really good genetics within the population, that we're making nice, healthy penguins. We'll work together to send penguins to different institutions to breed. We'll bring in penguins from different places. It's all very cooperative, which is awesome. 
And our flock here at John Ball Zoo has been very successful over the years. We've been in the SSP for a very long time, have some really experienced keepers with um, breeding season and raising penguins if we do have to hand raise. But lately the parents have been doing an awesome job of raising their chicks on deck themselves. But we do try to make really polite penguins so that if we do send them on to a different institution, they can behave themselves and not fight everybody for fish. We're also starting to work on, you guys can imagine with this nice big deep penguin pool, it's great for them, but if we want to get a weight on anybody, it can be very challenging because if they don't want to cooperate, they just go in the pool. Um, so we are working on, we have a new scale. We're working on trying to get these guys more scale trained and desensitized to that. So doing things like having the scale not be slippery, offering them their favorite treats when they're standing on it, things like that is how we're starting to prep these guys and get weights more frequently on them. So that if their weight is an indicator of anything, we can catch it more regularly. So penguins don't become um, sexually mature for breeding season until a little bit later in their life. Generally four or five, the sec you know, between boys and girls is a little bit different, but right around that age is when they become more mature. So a lot of our more stately adults that know what's going on, that are really interested in breeding season are the ones that will stay up by their burrows. Whereas a lot of the younger, unpaired penguins are the ones that we see down in the water or even some of our older our older gentlemen that we have they don't really pair up with anybody anymore and we'll see them down here in the pool more as well too and the gulls are always interested in feeding time the penguins can be snatchers and they eat a very similar diet to our kelp gulls so we always try to feed the kelp gulls right after the penguins have eaten. That way the penguins aren't coming and snatching up all the gull food the gulls get a chance. So they know they come out toward the end of feeding knowing that their food is on its way. All right guys, well hopefully you had fun with the feeding today. We really miss having you. Hopefully we'll get to see you around the zoo soon. And in the meanwhile, we hope that you're finding ways to go outside around your house and experience your natural wildlife and get to connect and know it. See you soon.